Hey, this is Kathy from Kathy Cooks For You. Welcome back to my kitchen and welcome to Asian Basics. In this first episode, we are going to learn what I always have on hand in my fridge and my pantry. Now, you could think, oh gosh, there is no way I am gonna tackle Asian food. Um, it's too scary, I'll just get it for takeout, no big deal. Well, you know, I wish I could have thought that, but you know, it costs a lot of money to get takeout or go to restaurants. And when I want to feed my family Asian food and I want to eat it more than once a month, I had to figure out how to make it myself and how to throw things together with what I had and just modify and come up with some Asian fusion, I'll call it. Today's episode, we are gonna discuss what I keep on hand all the time. And a lot of this I don't just use for Asian food. I use it for Mexican also, Italian. They are interchangeable for sure. So we're gonna start by, I'm just gonna go down and pick, oh, well, this is for everything, right? Your garlic. Now I mince my own garlic, put it in olive oil and a lot of salt, and I use this in everything. So this is our first and maybe our most important is garlic. Make sure you always have garlic on hand. Do you need fresh? No, it's okay if all you have is powdered garlic, granulated garlic, that's okay. Or you can go buy the store-bought mince, but I would prefer you to mince your own and use fresh, but use what's easiest and most convenient for you and it will still taste good. Is it gonna have as much pungent garlic flavor? No, but that doesn't mean it's not gonna be delicious. Our next is scallions. I use scallions for everything, and they make Asian dishes pop. Not only do I cook with them, but just sprinkling it on top to finish fresh, and it's a dollar, a dollar. You can, and sometimes it's two for a dollar. So scallions is a must, not just for my Asian cooking. I, I keep it on hand for everything. Cilantro. Now cilantro, that too can be used for Mexican, Asian. Thai cooking uses a lot of cilantro and lime. And so I always keep lime too. And so does Mexican food, it uses both. So these are also great things to keep on hand. Now with your herbs, I usually keep them in a Ziploc and I have a wet towel in there, just a wet paper towel. And I just, you know, put my herbs in there. I'm not very gentle. Put my herbs in there and just shove it like this. I don't even close it, just shove it like this in my fridge. It lasts a long time. So don't think this is gonna all be wasted. I told you limes. Limes are almost like salt to me. I finish a lot of food with limes, a lot of Mexican food, a lot of soups, um, a lot of Asian, and limes are also very cheap. And you know, if you have too many, then you just squeeze some in some, make some limeade or just have some lime in your water. Ginger. Now, this is one big piece of ginger. Now, I now like to have my minced ginger like I have my minced garlic. And so I, but I don't use ginger as much as I use my minced garlic. This stays in the fridge and lasts a couple months. This I put into small Ziploc bags and I just break a piece off every now and then in my freezer. So you can mince your ginger and your garlic. I have videos for you on both of those and I will put them down below in the description. I will give you a card above and maybe you'll get an editing screen of it too. So please, mince your own fresh garlic and your own ginger. You will love it and you'll have it for a long time kept in the fridge and the freezer. Okay, those were my fresh ingredients. Let me wipe my hands here. Now on to my others. Now we can all guess soy sauce. Now, soy sauce isn't just for putting on your rice, guys, or using as a condiment. Soy sauce can be used in a variety of ways. It's not just for your rice. It's not just a sprinkle on top of any Asian dish to make it salty. Uh, you can use this to make teriyaki. Teriyaki is soy sauce, garlic, ginger, and some form of sweetener. So 
Think of this as a base that you will create other sauces with. And um, it can also be used in soups and it can be used to season your soup with salt and then also give it a layer of flavor. And I'm more talking about Asian soups, but so good quality soy sauce is a must. Okay, this is one of my favorites. And I just ran out, so you're getting a new jar of it. This is my coveted favorite right there. Made by the same company that makes the famous Sriracha, but this is far better. Now I have Sriracha in my fridge and it's used more like a ketchup. This I cook with. Now, what is it? It's basically Sriracha that isn't ground up so much. It's chilies and garlic, hence chili garlic sauce. And you find it with the green lid. It's still made by, we call it the crazy chicken. Um, but really it's a rooster now that I think about it. But it has a green lid. Look for the green lid. It's near Sriracha at your grocery store. And it is spectacular. And this can be used as a condiment. And it's great to cook with and to put in sauces. I mean, I cannot tell you how amazing this product is. Next, we have rice vinegar. Now, vinegar is one of those things when people see it in a recipe, they're kind of afraid to put it in. But man, does it add like this pow of flavor. Rice vinegar is much milder than your other vinegars. And um, it's used in a variety of different ways in cooking. Um, just recently, I made a teriyaki meatball. And at the end with the sauce, I just put a tablespoon of this in at the end of it. And it just, it just takes that flavor to the next level. And so these are the things that make restaurant food taste good, or these kind of things. Another one of my favorites, red curry paste. This is not like yellow curry. This has, um, well, let me just read the back just so I can get it all in for you. Glasses are a little dirty. Okay, spices, including red chili peppers, and it has garlic, it has lemongrass in it, and that's what gives it such a good flavor for soups, uh, marinating beef and chicken with it, has salt, shallot, coriander root, and lemon peel. Oh, I'm sorry, lime peel. So this is amazing, it's reasonable. All this stuff is very reasonable at your grocery store. So don't think that these are expensive items that you have to get. Oh, and I brought out my ginger. I do keep a powdered ginger, more for baking, but um, if you, uh, it's better than no ginger at all, right? And one of my favorites, I love everything coconut. And so canned coconut milk. This is very different than that stuff you get by your dairy milk and your soy milk and all those. This is amazing. Now usually you have a, oh, I'm just looking on the back. There's a recipe for coconut custard pie. That sounds amazing. Um, so usually this settles. So your heavy liquids come to the bottom and your cream floats to the top. And it's spectacular. It, this is great in soups. It's good in marinades. I mean, it's good in dessert. I mean, it is fantastic. It is unsweetened. So this is not the um, product, the, the, oh, what's it called? It's like over in your liquors and there's a creme, creme de coco, creme de coconut. This is not creme de coconut. That's more like a um, sweetened condensed milk. That's the version of sweetened condensed milk, but it's only coconut milk. That we do not want. That is used mostly for alcohol drinks. I mean, that's why it's left over there. I mean, I, I never have that. Now, and also I have found there's a coconut milk powder. Now this is, you know, me as being a foodie. Now I am so stressed that I would run out of coconut milk like this, that I keep one of these on hands just in case. So I have coconut powdered milk, which that's pretty pathetic, but you know, I don't ever want to run out of any of these ingredients. I mean, this is how I create. I've got to have this stuff on hand all the time or, or I just can't create. And that's what I do. It's like a, an artist would not have cadmium red, right? Or, you know, they wouldn't have 
whatever blue, you know, I can't think of the names of the blues, but you know, they would not, not have their primary colors because they know with those primary colors, they can have a world of color. And that's exactly what these ingredients are. They are a world of flavor that will knock your friends, family, and your own socks off. We're not done. There's also packets. Now, you know, and these are seasoning packets. This one happens to be um, for panzit, which we will be making um, Filipino panzit. Um, now, I would have snubbed my nose at these and been like, oh, please, no, no, no. Now, I, I have this amazing Asian market I go to. These are at the Asian market. Um, I've seen them at other grocery stores, but I get mine at the Asian market. But here's the thing. My mom has a friend that's probably a little bit younger than me, and she is a Filipino woman. And she lives in the Philippines and comes over here with her husband, and they camp, and that's how my parents met them. She uses these, so if she can use these, I can too. So once in a while, I do have packets. Um, do I use any other packets? No, I don't think so, but I do use these because Michelle uses these. So there we have, oh, and then I wanna get into pastas and rices, and this is the last thing, but this is like, this is a little more advanced. This is your fish sauce. This stuff smells so bad. It's fermented fish sauce. And um, yeah, but man, does it make food taste good. But you only use it itty, itty, itty bit. So it's not like vanilla or cinnamon that you can double in a recipe. Do not double this in a recipe. All right, on to my starches. If you could have one type of pasta for Asian cooking, I would tell you to have rice noodles. Now, I have two different kinds. If you can only get one, I would get the linguine. It's not real wide. It's not real skinny. These are great and very versatile in Asian cooking. And if you want to just be crazy, I keep a vermicelli one on hand, too. And this also is very good. And But this, this one I use the most. Now I have these egg noodles. Now these will be used with my packet here and I'm gonna make some amazing pans it for you guys. Pans it, pans it. I'm sure I'm saying it like, like a Michigander, sorry. And then for my cold salads, I do use that vermicelli rice noodle, but I also use these. These are the soba noodles and they usually come in like a, a, a cardboard container and then um, they're individually wrapped. And these are soba noodles. And soba noodles um, have wheat flour and sweet potato flour in them. Uh, the problem with these is that they cook up really dark. So I used to call them chocolate noodles with my boys, and they don't taste like chocolate. They cook up really dark. And what did I make? I made an Asian soup, and I just needed, my kids were over, so I just needed some filler. I needed something more than just this brothy soup. So we had the soba noodles and it looked kind of dingy. <laughs> so um, better for soups to use this. These are great for cold noodle salads, which I will be making one of my cold noodle salads for you. And that's kind of like a clean out the fridge salad. So these ingredients are what I keep on hand. On any given day, you are gonna find these things in my house and they, just like an artist needs his colors to create, this is how a chef creates. They have got to have things on hand. Now, you don't have to have all these on hand. I'm not saying go out and buy every single one. If I could have you just buy the basics, the really slim down basics, it would be get yourself some rice noodles and some soba noodles. Start there. Get yourself a can of coconut milk. This is a must, even if you never make an Asian dish. Get yourself some soy sauce and some rice wine vinegar. That is great on salads too. And then your garlic, your ginger in any form you choose, and then your fresh ingredients. And just start there and then we will expand you to newer horizons. 
Thank you so much for watching Kathy Cooks For You. Sorry I didn't cook for you today, but I just wanted to show you these great ingredients that you really need on hand to really create good Asian food in your house. Oh, and rice. We can't forget the rice. You gotta have some jasmine rice on hand. Oh, and you know, if you want some basmati, that's fine too. But jasmine is my favorite. It's so floral and delicious. So I always have jasmine on hand for Asian cooking. Please subscribe below with the red button. Click the little bell so you get a notification for when I post videos. And I'd love to hear from you with a thumbs up and a comment.